Hello, uh, this video is going to uh, show you how to produce a scatter plot with a trend line, uh, a very common and, and very useful method for describing uh, or, or summarizing information between two variables uh, because it really helps us see uh, quite clearly if there's a relationship between two variables. So, so what we're going to do, uh, we'll have to draw, of course, our y-axis and our x-axis. Uh, it's, it's often the case, not always, but it's very often the case that uh, whatever we put on the y-axis is what we call the dependent variable, and which whatever we put on the x-axis is an independent variable. Now, the definition of these two things can, can sometimes get a little bit blurry, uh, but generally speaking, whatever we choose to put on the y-axis is somehow dependent on whatever is on the x-axis uh, and not vice versa. So the, the direction uh, of dependency here would only go in one direction and, and would, would not go both ways. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that when we get into our, our data set here. So I think it will be a little bit uh, evident which one ought to be dependent and independent. What, a, what the scatter plot then is, is it's really just a, a bunch of dots that we're going to draw that correspond to different data points. Mm -hmm. And then here I can see, well, it looks like there's a positive relationship. So I can draw a, a nice straight line showing just the general trend or the what we say the average relationship between uh, any two variables. There could be a downward pattern, something like this, uh, or of course it's possible that there's no relationship whatsoever and we might just see you know, a bunch of massive dots indicating there isn't really much of a relationship at all uh, between these variables. So let's let's begin with our our exercise here. I've uh, I've put some some graph paper on my sheet. It uh, makes us these types of problems much easier to work with. So here we have uh, part A: produce a scatter plot using city miles per gallon on the y-axis and and cylinders on the x-axis. So this data set is uh, a whole bunch of information on different cars. Uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, then this data set will look familiar to you. <coughs> so we're going to use uh, cylinders and city miles per gallon. Now, as you'll recall, I said this y-axis is dependent on this x-axis is independent. So in, in this exercise, Oops. In this exercise, it, it should be evident why one of these is the independent and why the other is dependent. For example, cylinders, the number of cylinders in a car, or you can think of the size of an engine, the cylinders in a car, it's not caused by, or it's not a result of, it's not dependent on the miles per gallon. The number of cylinders in a car determines miles per gallon. So city miles per gallon is determined by cylinders, not cylinders being determined by miles per gallon. Does that make sense? If, if we have uh, an eight cylinder engine, then the miles per gallon is going to be low. If the miles per gallon is low, it doesn't mean, well, we're going to end up with an eight cylinder engine. Okay, so the causality uh, or the, the direction of that relationship uh, is, is hopefully quite quite clear. Now let's uh, let's continue on with our problem here. So I'm going to draw. Uh, I'll draw on my my axis on the diagram. So here I'll have uh, on my y-axis. This is city miles per gallon, and down here these are cylinders. Oops. And I have only a few options. I have four cylinders. I have a few four cylinders, and I have six cylinders and eight cylinders. So there's only really three, three groups. So here I'll have four, six, and eight. And for the miles per gallon, it's a, a continuous variable. Um, 
So I'm going to scale this, and I'm going to, uh, let's see, I've got my lowest value is 11, my highest value is 28. So let's go something like this. I have 10, uh, 14, 18, 22, 26, and 30. So here I'm just putting a scale on the y-axis uh, that I know is going to uh, include the full range of possible values uh, in my data set. So I started with a minimum of 10, my smallest value is 11, so that will fit. My largest value on the scale is 30. That will hold my largest values here are 28. So, so this scale will work fine. So now let's start with uh, our first uh, four cylinders. So we need to look through our data set. Uh, oops, <coughs> go through our data set and find, here's our four cylinders. So I have one, two, and three. So I have three observations for four cylinders, two 28s and a 24. So for four cylinder, here's a, here's a 28 and a couple of 24s. I'll just put them side by side, but really they would be sitting right on top of each other. <coughs> Next are six cylinders. Uh, let's change color here. Six, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five observations. So my smallest is 18. So here's an 18. And then I have a couple of 19s here and here. So there's 19. And finally the 21 and the 22. 21 and 22, okay. Moving on to the eight cylinder, I have just the two left, two remaining observations, 11 and 15. So here's 11, and here's 15. Okay, so there's uh, there's our scatter plot. Uh, to add a trend line, now if you were to do this in Excel or, or on the computer somehow, you would, you'd have a command and all of this would be quite fully automated and, and precise. When you're producing one of these by hand on graph paper, you, know, you can only do so much uh, as far as your precision goes. So I'm really just going to eyeball it, and I'm going to draw a straight line that looks like it uh, generally goes in the direction of the average observation. So I'm looking at you know, roughly an average here, here, and here. So I'm drawing a line that gives us uh, some idea of the general trend uh, in these relationships. So what what can we see from this trend line? Well, the, clearly there's a negative relationship. As cylinders, as the number of cylinders increases, miles per gallon is quite clearly decreasing. So uh, we can draw some conclusion here that there's a negative correlation or negative relationship between cylinders and city miles per gallon. The more cylinders you have in your car, uh, the lower will be your miles per gallon, or really what that means is your fuel efficiency declines uh, as you have more cylinders in your engine. Okay, uh, I hope this helps uh, give you some idea of how to produce these scatter plots and trend lines. Okay, thanks for watching.